right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined from Charlotte, North Carolina by John Hinson. How are you doing, John? Good. Thank you for having me. Of course, of course. We're delighted to have you. Uh, John is the editorial director for Spotlight Branding, a content marketing company that specializes in helping solo and small firms generate more referrals, stay top of mind with their audience. Spent nearly a decade working with legal and financial professionals to grow their firms without the frustration and hassle of appeasing the search engine gods. Oh yeah, that's right. I, I'm not. I'm not sure whether the search, whether they're gods or devils. That, that, that's that, that's up for debate. Yeah. <laughs> Robot overlords. Overlords. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Autocrat. Um, so what we're going to talk about today is how to take advantage of your most valuable marketing uh, asset, which is your audience. So, um, John, let's let's get straight into it. Um, yeah. Why is it that, you know, especially in marketing, you're always running after the new thing and the shiny new toy and everything. But we, yeah. but a lot of times we, we do overlook our audience. I mean, our, our, your audience, the, you know, the, the customers, the, all of those people, we just overlook them because we're chasing yeah. after something else. Yeah. You know, I, I think that, uh, you know, as the internet kind of rose and, you know, search engines and, and people started gravitating towards that. A lot of that stuff kind of got left behind, right? Yeah. You know, uh, back before the, the internet word of mouth was the best way to gain new customers, to grow a business. And a lot of that now seems to be forgotten. You know, everyone mm -hmm. is focusing on, Oh, I got to get my keywords, right. I got to make sure that I'm ranking on Google and they're neglecting this, this network of people you know, current clients, past clients, uh, other like strategic referral partners that you have, you know, family, friends, leads, uh, even, you know, lost prospects, lost deals, stuff like that. You know, people who said no or not right mm -hmm. now, like there's still value in those people because you have their contact information and, and it just uh, really, really lost opportunity, really big opportunity for a lot of small businesses, regardless of whatever industry they're in to take advantage of that network that they've already grown just by simply keeping in touch with them. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, what's interesting about, as you said, I mean, what's interesting about that is, I mean, these are, these are here at hand, right? They're, you don't have to go looking for them. You know where they are. Um, mm -hmm. But as you say, we rarely do a lot with them because we're, I guess, if you go back pre-internet times, right, it's hard work. <laughs> it's hard work mm -hmm. to do it. And I think that's part yeah. of the problem now is that there's so many buttons you can just switch and go, oh, well, I'll just fire off a campaign or whatever. But actually nurturing yeah. your, your audience, that takes some hard work. Yeah. Well, also, admittedly, it's not really sexy. Like, yeah, it's not true. the most exciting. It's not the most exciting thing. It's it's uh, I equate it a lot to hunting versus farming, right? Like mm -hmm. hunting, there's some excitement to it. You're going out, you're going and trying to find something new to bring back. You know, that's that's the cold lead generation mm -hmm. side of it. Farming is you're just tilling your fields. You're doing the same thing, you know, and, and you're cultivating what you already have. And so it's reasonably less exciting, but the, the difference between hunting and farming is hunting is not guaranteed, right? You, you're not guaranteed when you yep. go out that you're going to find something. Whereas farming, you see what you have in front of you and it's up to you. And, and, and there's more that you can do to cultivate that and, and help that stuff grow and get more out of it more consistently. Yeah. And I think that's a really, I, I love that analogy because I think it's a really good analogy for, for this, because if you think about it, uh, when you're, when you're far, you're nurturing and you're, the timing is the thing because that's what a lot of people mm -hmm. uh, give up on, right? It's like, you know, they ask for a mm -hmm. referral, they don't get it immediately. So they go, oh, well, I asked, they didn't have any. And don't right. realize that it's not top of mind for me, a referral for you right now. But if you if you remind me over time, maybe then or you incent me or you, you know, build a relationship mm -hmm. or something, then I'm more likely to think, oh, yeah, 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 yeah I should refer those. And therefore, the farming part, as you say, while it's not sexy, it has has more predictability about it, if you like, if you're prepared yes. to put the work in. 
Yeah, absolutely. It's it's definitely a long game for sure. You know, like I wish I could sit here and tell you, you know, I wish I could be like one of those crazy sales gurus like, oh, I can 10x your business in two days or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's not really the case. Like, and I would be very wary of trusting people who uh, come on and say a lot of those things. No offense if you've had other people like that on your show, but it is it is definitely a long game and it's a momentum game, right? Yeah. Like if you just dip your toe in the water or you just do it sporadically, you're not going to see results for a very, very long time, but that's why we, that's why we focus on content and, and authority building so much and staying in touch because you do a lot of stuff. You, you know, you post on social media daily, do it consistently. You send out an email newsletter monthly or biweekly. You post consistent articles to your website, create a bunch of good video content. The more you do, the, the, the quicker that momentum will build and the sooner you'll start seeing those consistent results. Yeah, I mean it's a, it's a, a, exactly, and it's it's like that age old thing. It's doing the hard yards, and uh, you know, mm -hmm. putting in. You know, the more you put into it, the more you'll, you'll get out of it. But like you said, I mean, there's a lot of different dimensions to it, and it just needs it needs you to systematize it in many ways, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, you know, one of the things that we've kind of developed here at Spotlight Branding is something called a content loop. And mm -hmm. it's exactly what it sounds like if you can visualize it, you know, like traditional marketing, you have like a funnel and it's just a stop and end point. You know, the top of your funnel is your cold leads and everything like that. And then the bottom of the funnel, there's people who've really warmed up, they're ready to make a buying decision. The issue that we've seen with that is there's still, you got a lot of people in the middle who still need to be nurtured. You have the people that come through all the way through the funnel. They either said no or not right now, or they said yes, and they became a client. They bought your product, did your service, whatever it is, and they've moved on. No one's nurturing them or not nurturing them enough. And so you turn that funnel into a, a perpetual loop where you're consistently staying in touch with people. And it's not, it's not super labor intensive. It doesn't have no. to be. You can do as much or as little as you want. goes back to what I said about momentum though. Mm -hmm. But even just, you know, what we have seen, especially with our clients in the legal industry, just sending out one email newsletter a month that has valuable content in it. And that's very important. It's not, you know, don't treat it like a billboard yep. where it's just full of calls to action and all that. Provide value, provide valuable information. One email newsletter a month brings back multiple referrals, multiple requests for repeat business. And it's one, it's one action a month. And then, you know, you pair that with some social media uh, and, and you build out a really robust website full of really great content and you can really start to generate a lot of good momentum that way. Yeah. And, and I think that's a, I, I, I think that's a really interesting point because if you think about it back in the day, right, if you were looking for an attorney or whatever, you know, you might mm -hmm. sort of call up your buddy and say, do you have an attorney or it's people, you know, can you refer me to an attorney? Um, kind of nowadays people do less and less of that. I think, you know, that sort of calling up and they do their searching and all of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But what you just pointed out there that if, if, if there's an attorney sending out a, a newsletter with relevant information, like there's some guy here who sends out a real estate market update mm -hmm. like once a month. Now that's hugely useful. I'm not selling or buying right now, but I still want to know how my house is doing. Same with legal. Yeah. Maybe I don't need you right now, <laughs> but I certainly, yeah. I certainly want to take notice if something comes up, I'm going to go, Oh, maybe I'll go to the newsletter guy. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, we actually had a client of ours, uh, and, and this is just a great practice to do in general, but he met this guy on a plane. They were having, you know, it's like a three hour flight. They got, you know, they're talking to each other along mm -hmm. the way. Our client tells him like, yeah, I'm a business attorney down in Miami. I do this, this, and this guy sitting beside him is like, cool. I'm thinking about starting a business here in a couple of years. Client gets his contact information, plugs him into his email newsletter. Three years later, that guy turns around and reaches out and is like, hey, I don't know if you remember me. We sat on a plane. I've been getting your newsletters for a while. I'm ready to start a business. I think you're my guy. And it mm -hmm. just turned into realize. And so it's just small things like that that can put an extra thousands of dollars in your bank account in mm -hmm. revenue that you otherwise wouldn't have gotten. Yeah. And, and, you know, and that's that's a fantastic story because that's a perfect illustration of the fact that it's it's not on your time, it's on their time. And therefore, mm -hmm. you know, if I turn around to you today and sort of try to sell you something and it's not you're not interested or you don't have a need for it right now, okay, 
but maybe six months, maybe like this guy, three years down the road. So it's it's that yeah. nurturing of ones uh, of those that really count at the end of the day. But as you say, it's yeah. a long game, so you have yeah. to be consistent. Because ba- maybe if he'd have stopped sending out that newsletter after a year, kind of got bored with doing it, or mm-hmm. probably never would have heard from the guy again. Yeah, it, exactly. And and so it's that consistency that that really is important. And so building a really good system, building your content loop, uh, you know, it, it's that is not a product we necessarily sell. Like we have yep. services that can do it. But I encourage business owners, regardless of whatever industry you're in, to build your own content loop. And it's pretty simple. And, and it's just that consistent, you know, creating those consistent touch points. I saw a stat uh, the other day is something like, you know, people need to engage with like seven to 10 pieces of your content before they're willing to like make that next step and engage very loose term. I'm not talking just liking Mm -hmm. or commenting on social media, but like really consuming it, you know, consuming an email, consuming an article, watching a video, stuff like that, where they will ultimately get to that point where they're ready to move forward. Mm hmm. And and I think obviously there's a there's a new wrinkle in all of this is now is with with AI and uh, you know people are going crazy like just creating all sorts mm-hmm. of content using AI, and which yeah. is great. I mean, and we use some AI tools ourselves, but I yeah. think there's a bit of a danger that you go down a route there where you're not making things very specific or you're you know, you're kind of taking shortcuts. And I think that's the danger. Yeah. I think AI is phenomenal as a support tool. But if you're yes. going to start using it to generate stuff and just fire stuff out, I think you're making a big mistake. Absolutely. Yeah. I, you know, I, I'm still not, you know, I'm not buying into this, the, the fear propaganda or whatever the AI is going to replace everyone outright. Mm-hmm. But I, I do think it is a great productivity tool. It's a great, uh, you know, research tool, you know, especially if you want to put mm-hmm. together a blog article pretty quick, it can do the research for you. And then, you know, even if you give it a prompt, like, hey, I need like a 500 word blog article on this, it can spit it out for you, but it is going to still sound very robotic. It's, it's going to just feel really bland. And so you still need to inject your unique voice and tone and personality into it uh, and, and even add to it. Because I mean, still, I know like chat GPT, for example, it's still, I think working somewhere between like six and nine months behind, like the the information that it has is still dating Mm -hmm. back to like late last year. So like it's constantly being updated, but it's never going to be like up to the minute or I I say never, like it's not going to be up to the minute for, for a long way down the road. Yeah. And, and I think there, as I said, I think therein lies the danger. And plus, by the way, talking mm-hmm. about the search engine overlords, um, the search mm-hmm. engines are looking to identify AI generated content yeah. and you're not going to rank for that. So it, yep. yes, you can, you can use it maybe to generate the bones of your article, but then you need to go in and you need to make some changes to it and all of that. Because otherwise, yeah. as you said, you're probably going to send out something that's a little robotic and the search engines are going to hate it. Absolutely. And and I tell you what, you know, the the average I, I saw this stat the other day too. The average age of a page that gets onto page one of Google is like over two years old. And mm. so you may think you're trying to get ahead now and you're not even going to feel that pain for a couple of years. And then you realize, look at all this time you've wasted. The other thing I like to talk about though with SEO yeah. is, you know, you do a pay, you know, everyone's goal is to get on page one. Right. You know, page two, like I saw, I, I'm throwing a bunch of stats here. Mm-hmm. Uh, only like 0.6% of Google searches even go to page two. So you're really right. trying to get page one. There's 10 results on page one of Google. Uh, in a lot of the research that I've done, at least in the legal and the financial industry, out of those 10 results, anywhere from four to six are going to be directories. So really, you're only competing for one of four to six spots with other businesses. The other ones are going to be dominated by the directories who have such massive SEO clout and power that they're going to get there regardless. So the you're, you're really fighting for very, very limited real estate. And if you're a small business, especially a small business in a huge market, I'm thinking the San Diego's, the Los yeah. Angeles is even, you know, Charlotte where we are, uh, you know, that's going to cost you thousands and thousands of dollars every month to go out and hunt for those leads and there's no guarantee that they're going to come in and you're going to even get to a point where you're visible. Yeah, uh, no, absolutely absolutely. I mean, if you're if you're in a if you're in a big market and you're a small business, the best thing for you really to do is to identify 
you're really down granularly to a granular level is your target mm -hmm. audience and really go yeah. after them and take small steps as opposed to just go, Hey, hello, I'm here. San Diego. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. If you're, if your target audience is everyone, then you're not marketing to anyone at all. Exactly. So, you know, definitely identify, you know, the pain points, you know, identify who your ideal client is and, and what their specific pain points are and really focus in your marketing message on those. Because look, you know, yes, your marketing should bring in people, but it should also repel a lot of people too. Like, mm. you know, if you're, if you're referring out more business than you're taking in, you still have a marketing problem. Like, you're doing a great job of generating leads. They're just junk leads yeah. and they're not, you know, there's a lot of refining that you can still do to hone in on who your ideal client is. Yeah. And I love you made that point there about the, I just wrote it down about repel, <laughs> repelling because mm -hmm. yeah, we, we live in this, we live in this society now that has promoted everything about volume, right? You know, how many likes yeah. do you have? How many this do you have? How many that do you have? And it's all volume mm -hmm. based. Uh, yeah. And that's what people think is the right measurement. So if I start my, my business and I'm getting tons and tons of incoming leads. But like you said, like 99% of them are junk. It might make me feel good, but it's not going to help my yeah. business. Right. And, and, you know, how much money are you spending? You know, how much of your revenue and your marketing budget is going towards, you know, sifting through 99 junk leads just to get to the one good one. And then you have, then there's more pressure on you then to convert that one good lead into a paying client. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, you already have, you know, going back to our original point, you already yeah. have all of these people, these great potential uh, valuable prospects in your network, in your contact list, go after them and, and really do that. You know, it's, it's, there's a bunch of different, I've seen a bunch of different numbers, but uh, it costs, anywhere from like five to 10 times more money to generate new business from cold leads than it does your existing audience. Mm -hmm. and, and for a small business, trying to be smart about their budget and, and trying to, you know, really have good, effective marketing, that's where the gold is. Yeah, no, absolutely. And then it, it, part of it then means that the customers that you do attract is you really want to give them an experience that differentiates you. So say, go back to your attorney even example, right? I mean, mm -hmm. if you said to people, what's the difference between these attorneys? They go, well, I don't know, they're attorneys. Um, maybe mm -hmm. they, you know, if they're all like, say they're all criminal or they're all whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most people have no idea what differentiates. And therefore, I think that, uh, you know, and if they, if they do whatever they said they're going to do, you think, okay, cool. I got what I wanted, but mm -hmm. there's no differentiation. Right. Right. And, and the way that you do differentiate yourself is through building yeah. that, you know, providing that value and, and giving that information, you know, like your social media feeds. And I still see this a lot with the legal industry. They basically treat their Facebook timeline like it's a billboard that they purchased 30 years ago at the same street corner. Right. It's just call our firm, call our firm, call our firm, book a consultation, mm -hmm. book a consultation. It's like, no, you you can control the message and, and you can provide a lot more value. And you know, the way that we, uh, you know, way, we as consumers make decisions now and, and really vet the people that we work with, people are much more likely to build that connection and build that rapport and trust because that's yeah. a big issue. You know, they are more likely to trust that firm or whatever business that you're in that can effectively communicate their understanding of your situation more so than the firm who's just like, yeah, yeah. call us. Yeah. Absolutely. And then, and then just the, the, the final thing is, um, and this is an interesting thing as well, is if you do engage with somebody or customer or and just take the legal profession, right? Um, if I'm working with the mm -hmm. criminal attorney, right? I mean, there's a great opportunity for that attorney to say, if you ever need these other services, here are other attorneys that I trust, you know, if you trust you and you trust, and that's hugely valuable. Now I'm going, yeah. oh, this isn't my, just my attorney. This is a resource to me. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and, and one of the things that I like to tell people is like, you don't have to just be this transactional mm -hmm. period in people's lives. You know, uh, like family law is a really good example, right? Like you don't have to just finalize someone's divorce. You can help someone yeah. prepare to make that decision. And then after the divorce is over, you can provide value by like tips for getting back into yeah. the dating pool or tips for like rediscovering your passions or, you know, 
being able to find closure and move on and stuff like that. And so finding ways, you know, before, during, and after to provide value is really what's going to set yourself apart. And you do that through the kinds of content that you're putting out. There. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. And I think it's such a great opportunity. And I think the great thing nowadays is for small businesses is that you, you've got reach, uh, and how you use that reach mm -hmm. is the important thing. Yeah, especially with social media, and you can control uh, how much you kind of got to pay to get that privilege. But you know, even just boosting a Facebook post for a dollar mm -hmm. can get you in front of five times more people than just how you would organically. And so, you know, if you're only getting twenty impressions on your post, boosting it for a dollar, you can get a hundred. Yeah. And, and you can control that 100, you know, you, in, into a very specific geographic area by very specific interest and education levels. It's kind of scary how detailed you can get with that. But that's also kind of just the marketing world. But, you know, yeah, you have so much control over who you can get in front of. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, John, thank you for those insights. Uh, those are fantastic. All of John's information will be below this video. But before we go, John, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Absolutely. Yeah. So like you said up front, you know, uh, Spotlight Branding, we provide content marketing services, uh, mostly for solo and small legal and financial firms. But, um, you know, we do have a website called SpotlightInsider.com. New content, podcasts, uh, videos, articles going up every single day around marketing, tech, uh, strategy, mental health, all kinds of stuff like that. Just providing value. Like I said, you know, we're, we're here to help uh, and just kind of help you know, business development and help your marketing strategy any way we can. But, uh, you know, our focus, especially for the clients that we serve, uh, just helping you generate those referrals and, and be top of mind rather than trying to chase after search rankings. Yeah, perfect. Listen, thanks again, John. Like I said, a lot of insights. I would encourage you to go check out John and his, uh, his services. Um, I'm, I'm a big believer in going straight to the experts because there's, there's so much to learn nowadays. I think the other thing, just before I go out, this is just a general comment is things are getting so specific, right? You know, things, you know, they're yes. getting so detailed and that you can't be a generalist. And I mean, you need experts in different yep. areas. That's why I would say, go, go find an expert like John. All right. Absolutely. Well, listen, thanks again, John. Thank you for watching and listening. I'll see you all again soon. Yeah.